These are the most powerful men in China. The members of the Communist Party's Politburo Standing Committee, the country's highest political body. For the past five years, these seven men have overseen some pretty significant policies and events. These images show that China appears to have installed weapons. World stock and currency markets were rocked for a second straight day today. All about war against corruption in China. President Trump says China is not doing enough to halt the weapons program of its ally, North Korea. But soon, Communist Party members will gather in Beijing for its National Congress, where its leadership for the next five years, including the Politburo Standing Committee, will be announced. And this is happening against a backdrop of a power struggle between Xi Jinping and other key figures within the party, and questions about whether Xi will step aside in five years' time as party convention dictates. There's clearly a lot at stake at this Congress, which is looming as a test of Xi Jinping's power within the party. In October this year, nearly 3,000 delegates from the Chinese Communist Party will gather at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing for the 19th National Party Congress. It is the most important political event in China. Held every five years, it is where the party's new leadership and its policy agenda is announced. We asked Dr. Ryan Manuel, an expert on the Chinese political system, to explain this fairly opaque event that has obvious implications for the rest of the world. For the last year, all around China, in every village, hamlet, county, municipality, province, they have had their own little congresses electing people that all now get to go to Beijing for the big party. The reason we, we, we get interested in this congress is because in the past, this has always been where they changed the leadership. What's significant about this congress is firstly who's invited to, to come, as in the delegates, but they've all been picked for the last year. What's much more significant in this congress is about who finishes up at the end being on top? Because that's the whole point of the Congress. At the end, you end up with seven, maybe nine, maybe 11, no one knows, maybe even five men, always men, unfortunately, standing on a stage telling you who the new leaders of China will be. The Communist Party of China, which has close to 90 million members, is run by a central committee. The committee has two small executive bodies, the Political Bureau, or Politburo, and the Politburo Standing Committee, or the PSC. The PSC is the highest body of China. At the Party Congress, the makeup of all three political bodies will change, but what matters most is who ends up on the PSC, because that is where the real power is. These men will effectively run the world's largest military and the second largest economy for the next five years. When you run China, you have basically two ways of making people do what you want. The first way is by putting your cronies in the positions you want, knowing that they'll do what you want them to. The second way is by telling everybody what to do. The 19th Party Congress is a really good chance for you to firstly, take all the people from the last five years and get rid of the ones you don't like and put in ones you do like more. And secondly, tell everyone what you're going to do. Now for the leader Xi Jinping, there's a huge amount at stake in this Congress because he became the leader five years ago, but when you become the leader, your predecessor gets to pick everybody who sits on the committee for you. Basically, you're stuck with the last leader's best choices. A top Chinese official has been charged with accepting bribes, stealing state secrets and abusing his power. His indictment part of an enormous corruption crackdown by President Xi Jinping. Leading up to this year's Congress, there has been a lot of speculation about a power struggle between Xi Jinping and other key figures within the party. After looking like he was in trouble, Xi seems to have the ascendancy, having removed or nullified some of his key opponents. And five of the seven members of the PSC could, or should, step down this year. There is somewhat of an unofficial retirement age of 68. So Xi can further consolidate his power if he's able to get his allies onto the PSC. People often describe this by saying that they are factions or, or little groups within this that jostle for power. What the second Congress for Xi, because the first Congress was the one who became the leader, what the second Congress does is it allows him to basically make one faction him. People sometimes see this as being a Xi Jinping power grab. The thing is, he already has the power. This is more like a chance to replenish the, the stocks with people that he likes more. This Congress should technically be Xi Jinping's last as leader. The term limit for party president is 10 years, or two consecutive five-year terms. So we should see the anointing of the next possible leader of China, 
who would be elected onto the PSC to be groomed for leadership, just as Xi Jinping was in 2007. But with Xi's growing power and influence over the party, there's some speculation that he might try and hold on for a third term. Beyond determining the new leadership of the party, the 19th Congress will also set China's policy agenda for the next five years. At this Congress, people often look for a big decision, something dramatic that will happen. That, that's not what this Congress is for. This Congress is for, for telling everybody who their new leaders are going to be, for saying what's already happened in the last five years, and then putting out a vision for the next five years, which is very broad. It's saying we will work on corruption, we'll possibly work on changing our foreign policy a little bit. Xi Jinping has his own favourite policy, which he calls Belt and Road. Basically, in other words, Xi is going to give us the next five years of motherhood statements. Then, then everything can start to figure itself out and people can start to make policies. That usually takes between six to 12 months. So there'll be a lot of, a lot of speeches and a lot of talk for a little while, but not much will actually change at the Congress. The big change is actually who gets put into positions. Um, do you want any sort of closing off statement or you, you... I think that should be yeah. fine. I think I think that's more than enough on the rules of the Chinese Communist Party for anyone to handle for one day. It's pretty <laughs> it's pretty abstract stuff.